All right, guys, we're heading back out to the clearing job. I believe this is bay number four. Oh, man, they all run together. That's wrong. I'm sorry. I think it's four. It's four. Yeah, it's day four. So, uh, it's about uh, 10 degrees this morning, and I'm about two-thirds away at the job, and realized I forgot the ether. So, I'm going to take a gamble and hope everything starts. These two pieces of equipment, they usually crank off pretty good, so... Go out there, get everything fired up, make sure nothing's frozen to the ground. And then uh, we're gonna take off down a fence row. We kinda got the last little path of the heavier brush. So hope to get that knocked out today. Let's go see if she starts. All right guys, we are finally up and moving this morning the good news is everything started hold on here a second i'm trying not to wear a tree this thing's stuck in the other one the good news is everything started the bad news is i'm a big wussy i was cold and had gloves on so i didn't get the record button hit when i thought i recorded it oh come on baby don't you do it so, uh, you're just going to have to take my word for it. I apologize that uh, I didn't get any cold cranking videos. The uh, track hoe didn't want to start, but it did. The does are fired up pretty good. The biggest dang issue we had was the dang tracks were frozen. We shoveled them out and we had them set up on some boards and did everything we could. But whenever you work in muddy conditions like that and then it flash freezes like it did. Why are you being a pain in the butt? Seriously, Tree. Get out of there. Go. Um, anyways, whenever it uh, flash freezes like that, you just, you just can't get the mud out of the rails. I'm sure you guys know that, especially the guys up north. Can't get the mud out of the rails, and then, then you got mud on the rollers, and they don't want to roll, and oh yeah, all kinds of fun. So, Anyways, it took me and Jerry about 30 minutes, but we got everything everything rolling everything's working good warmed up but i just want to kind of give you guys a quick overview a little more detailed overview of this project as you guys have probably seen by now whenever i first showed up and started working on this job i did not have a very accurate assessment i was wrong and made a lot of assumptions now in me and chris's defense this job was so grown up that walking it wasn't really all that feasible you couldn't really get a buggy through it so we were just kind of standing by the road and eyeballing it and from my perspective this is a time and material job so it's not like i was bid and i really need to go out here and look at everything me and the uh me and the farmer just kind of had an agreement on an hourly rate and uh we're kind of going with it so we did kind of run into some surprises though uh, the like i said before this used to be in hay probably about 10 years ago but what we didn't realize is is there's some spots out here in this field that even though it was in hay he was farming around some ditches and some junk piles and some possibly some old uh barn building sites i don't know if you can see like right here in front of me there's a whole bunch of concrete which was technically supposed to be in the middle of this supposed field so we're now into the little bit of a heavier brush. There's a couple draws that go down through here. We're getting cleaned out. I guess this is one of those jobs where it would have been nice to uh, have a drone, not necessarily for YouTube purposes and getting some video. Don't get me wrong, it would have been awesome to do a, would have been absolutely awesome to do a flyover, especially a before and after, because I think we're gonna end up covering every bit of 30 acres on this clearing job and the way the land lays it just would have looked just would have looked neat come on you stinking stump i know you're down there somewhere sorry i got a little bit of weight syndrome i get sidetracked easy but uh but the other thing with the drone from a practical standpoint we probably could have flew this thing over and had a little bit better idea of what we were getting into before we tied into it but nevertheless drone or no drone um 
the work's got to be done. So we are uh, we're getting there slowly, I guess. Come on, you booger! There you go. But we're getting there. We got a couple old ponds up there, so we're trying to break these stumps off these trees, uh, getting the stumps in the pond, trying to burn trees as much as we can. We're uh, getting ready to head down through this little second draw. We got the first draw done the other day. I kind of go down through here. Jerry goes ahead of me, knocks out all the small stuff he can with a dozer, which allows me to get in here pretty easy to these bigger trees. Pop a few roots, break the tree off a stump if I can, throw it to the side, and then uh, once we get some land busted open, we'll kind of eyeball the best place to put a brush pile. Well, easy now. That one's going to get a hydraulic line if I'm not easy. I'll tell you what, clearing, it don't have to be hard on a machine. But you really got to be patient and you really got to be paying attention. It's not like digging, you know, whenever you're digging, other than possibly a few overhead obstacles like a power line or something like that, you really don't have to pay attention to what the upper half of your boom's doing. But whenever you get to clearing, you got to pay attention to where the entire boom is at all times. Otherwise, you'll be busting a hydraulic line off or rubbing up against something you shouldn't be rubbing up against. And then you're in trouble. I'm not going to say I haven't been guilty of breaking some stuff along the way, but for the most part, I try to take my time, pay attention to what the heck I'm doing. Get out of there, Trey. Oh, you stupid booger. Reposition. But this this job has been quite the quite the fight a little bit I shouldn't say that it's actually went for the weather conditions we have had and the obstacles we've ran into we didn't foresee coming we're making some really really good headways and I don't I've been I don't know a whole lot about um, like a skid steer with a, a mulcher or a flail head on the front of it I think there's some spots on this job um, that would probably be the ticket It'd probably be, uh, be the machine. I've never ran one. I've been around a few, so I really don't 100% understand their capabilities and what they, uh, what they can do and what they can't do. Um, I do know, you know, like obviously in this bigger stuff, like I'm working on now, I think it's going to be pretty much useless. But if you're just wanting to mow this down and, and keep it mowed down and clear it, I think it'd be just fine because you could chip up the trees and let them lay on the ground. But... These boys are wanting to farm this ground and we need, they want the stumps and as much stuff out of the ground as we can. Now, obviously we're not going to get every last thing out of there. So the plan is right now, you know, if you got that little twig on that stump, if you're good enough with that traco, you can take that uh, tooth, kind of wrap it around it, hook it and pull them out. And you can probably get 80 plus percent of them out and then the dozer comes back behind you and cleans up. He can get the rest of them. Now, I'm not saying we're getting every last stump out of there, because I know we're not, but we're getting the majority of them out of there. And then the plan is, after that, is to come back and uh, come back through here with like a heavy duty brush disc, hit it two or three times and kind of chop everything up. And they're probably going to plant corn in here for a year or two just to make sure everything's knocked down before they come in here with a, a bean head and try to harvest beans, you know, where you're skimming the ground. Now. With all that being said, that's just kind of my uh, assessment and thought process of what we're doing and why we're using the equipment we do. Um, I don't know, ideally in some of this lighter stuff like up in here, I think a skid steer and a, uh, some sort of mulching head would probably be the ticket. But honestly, with if you're already set up on the job, there you go, you little booger. Now if I can just get that thing to fall and miss that other tree. Ha -ha! Don't you do it! Teach you a lesson. There you go. Oh, you're gonna do it anyway, ain't you? How come every time I turn the video on and try to knock a tree over, it ends up going where I don't want it to go? I wasn't videoing this. 
it'd be right where I want to go. I found out quickly by doing YouTube, if you want something to go wrong, just film it. <laughs> I was talking to uh, Brandon or Jason or somebody about that the other day. It seems to never fail. But anyways, that's all right. I want to give you guys a uh, real life and not an edited version of what's supposed to happen because this is what actually happens. Everybody makes mistakes. Sometimes it's how you deal with them is what makes you a good operator or a bad operator. As I say that, I'm about ready to really screw some stuff up. Come on. Get out of there. Take that. Boom. Taught that guy a lesson, so. But anyways, yeah, I don't know. Um, if anybody's had much experience with a skid steer and a, I don't know what you call them, mulching head, grinding head, uh, clearing head. Uh, I guess there's different types, you know, disc mowers and stuff. Give me some input on how you think it would have worked in this situation. I'm, uh, I'm definitely interested. I'm not saying I'll go out and buy one, but uh, there is a couple places around here to have them for rent. That we could possibly use them. Come on, get off that tree. What is your deal? I'm going to go round and round here, little booger. I do know a lot of people say that, you know, I need a bigger track for doing stuff like this while you're messing around with this little 120, but man, I'll tell you what, I've cleared with some bigger track -os. and if you're in great big stuff, I agree with you 100%. You just need the brute, brute strength and size to wrestle those trees if you're going to make any time. But in situations like this, I'll be honest with you, I just didn't have my little 120 because it is it's plenty powerful and it's so much more nimble I mean I could uh, just uh, you know wiggle in and out of trees and not have to worry about my tail swing as much uh, I think the next machine I get I'm hoping to probably look at maybe getting some sort of zero tail swing machine I've really been eyeballing those uh, Volvo 145s I think they're like EECUs or something I'm horrible with numbers but that's uh Kind of what I'm eyeballing pretty serious about my next machine, but I don't know how soon that's going to be. But anyways, I'm not trying to bore you guys to death. Just trying to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. Me and Jerry are going to try to work our way down this draw today. Chris is supposed to be on his way out here. We're going to try to uh, light this brush pile on fire. This stuff is so green that it's hard to get to burn. But there's a little bit of a breeze today, so I'm thinking we can get that breeze blowing in the uh, right direction we'll be in pretty good shape so i'll uh i'll get what video i can hope you guys enjoy and uh thanks for riding along we're getting ready to finish up the day here i don't know if you can see jerry over on the dozer i know it looks beautiful and sunshiny outside but it is like probably 15 degrees outside with a pretty brisk wind blowing and that man has been outside on that dozer all day long 10 hours 10 hours and he stopped about 30 minutes for lunch and that was it hasn't complained one bit now before you guys go and think I'm a meanie or a hard butt for putting an old man out there on the dozer all day I have begged the guy to switch me it's like nice and probably 65 70 degrees in this traco he won't do it i don't know he just keeps on going so i'll let him go are you cold you're crazy all right guys here's the end of the day there was there was a few trees over there uh, we called the power company, they're like six weeks out on getting them, so uh, I just really took my time and got those knocked out. Jerry's got that one little bitty patch there to finish up. And we got all this done down through here today. It was the heaviest of the heavies. That pile there is not really wanting to take off. This one here we got burning pretty good, so we got the cedar trees in that field back there yet. I know it's hard to see at the sun, but there's some over there. We're getting pretty close. We put a pretty good dent in it. So this will probably be part two of this uh, job. 
hopefully the next video part three we'll be loading up and hauling out of here because we're getting close so thanks for watching guys okay guys i hope you enjoyed that video if you did if you could just take a few seconds to hit that thumbs up button that'd be greatly appreciated and if you want to make sure you don't miss out on the next great adventure or the next project on dirt perfect hit that subscribe button <laughs>